Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And we're here for a very special episode number 15. We took the show on the road and we are at Sharks Fan Fest. That's right, here at SAP Center. So this episode we're going to be talking about the Sharks' new third jersey. We'll also be interviewing some fans come in along the way. We'll talk about some of the cuts that the Sharks have just recently made and also the new lighting that's making the ice look very pretty. Really nice, yeah. So uh, you ready to start the show? I'm ready. Great, and for those listening as a podcast, I'm the good looking one. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's talk about the uh, the new lighting that they've got in the arena. Yeah, uh, they they upgraded the lighting to LED, mm. um, so it's a lot brighter and a lot whiter than it was before. Um, that allows the sharks to do more on ice presentations, much better stuff. Nice. Um, you'll notice a big difference when they cut from the national anthem to turning on all the lights because uh, they usually darken the ice for that. Uh, it'll be a lot quicker. It'll come on a lot quicker and a lot brighter. Um, you'll notice a big difference in the corners, and we read about... Yeah, I think it was Hurdle had said it, um, saying that it's a lot easier now to see the uh, the puck in the corners. He's actually, I think the phrase was, you can actually see the puck in the corners <laughs> now. So that's great. Um, you know, I, I think you're going to find that it's it's a very subtle change for most players. Maybe they've already been used to the dimmer lights, but it's just going to make it that much easier to see because hockey is a contrast sport. It's a little black puck on a big white sheet of ice, unless uh, you have a bunch of ads covering everything which we talked about <laughs> last time around. But, you know, it's going to help the players, you know, make those nice plays, pick up the puck a lot easier. I think it's going to help the goaltenders too. Yeah. Uh, being able to pick up the puck off the uh, when it's being rimmed around the boards and uh, make a play off of that. Uh, you'll probably notice a really big difference on TV now that there's mm. high definition for everything. So um, you'll probably be able to pick up the puck a lot better, especially in the corners where there's right. a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. um, it'll make the game easier to watch, maybe. Yeah. Um, I think we'll see some big differences. I know the NHL is trying to push all the teams to go to this new lighting, and not everyone has done it yet, but uh, there were a handful of other arenas that did do it. So overall, I think it's going to be better for the NHL. You can see a better product yeah. on the ice. Yeah, and I have to agree. And you know, at first, uh, we, we came to a preseason game, our producer Jason and myself, and we took a look at the ice and, and he was saying, gosh, it looks it looks bright to me. It looks like really, really bright to me. So um, we had a before and an after picture, which we could put up right now. Yeah. And you could definitely see the difference. I mean, for me, just sitting there, I didn't really, I didn't really notice uh, until you start looking at the side by sides. When you see the side by side pictures, of the you know, the before and the after, yeah. my goodness, what a difference it makes. Yeah. So I think it'll be, it's a good thing. Yeah. It's, it's something that the Sharks ice needed, I guess, Absolutely. for the SAP Center. Yeah. My favorite player in the whole wide world, Joe Thornton. Martin Jones. Hurdle. Brent Burns. Eric Carlson. Jonas Donskoy, all the way. I love the fin. He's a stud. Patrick Marlowe. Hurdle. I love the couture. Uh, favorite Sharks player is going to have to be Joe Thornton. Joe Thornton. I'm going to have to go with Big Joe for this year. I, I really want to see him have a great year. Okay, so now let's talk about the roster cuts that happened as of recent. So today, now we've got, yeah, yeah t today, right. <laughs> so we've got, I think it was 15 forwards and we've got nine defensemen on the roster, three extra of each type of player. Yeah. So where do you want to go from there? Well, let's start with the defense. Yeah. Um, Shimek and Good. Heed and Merkley actually is still uh, up on the roster on the team. Right. So we don't think Merkley is going to make the team, obviously. Uh, he needs, he's way too raw right now. But it's great that he's up, and it's great that they're still playing him in the preseason, giving him that really big game experience that he's not going to get for a couple more seasons. So it's good to see him. But the realistic thing is going to be Schmeck versus Heed for that seventh defenseman. I don't think they'll keep both and scratch two guys every night. I think uh, maybe on road trips, if they go on a long road trip, they might take both. But uh, realistically, it's going to be one of those two uh, that will be on the roster. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you. I think that Merkley is doing a really great job of showing what he's capable of doing. Um, and he's opened a lot of eyes to his, his unbelievable amount of skill that he's got. But I think you're going to see him uh, kind of playing back down. And you're going to see, like Aaron said, Shimmick. And Dan Rusinowski would be proud, by the way. Yeah. The pronunciation was on, on point there. Uh, so I think between Shimmick and Heed, Heed's been with the team for a long time. He hasn't really had a chance to really step in and show what he can do. I'd love to see him get that opportunity, but it really sounds like it's going to come down to just those two players. And it seems like it's up in the air. So 
uh, you know, Schmidt could come in and just kind of take that spot right away from from Tim Heed, uh, which would be unfortunate for for him. You know, he's he's been with the organization for a while and he's he's been trying real hard and mm-hmm. you know he's got shown some promise. He just hasn't really been able to make it go on the ice. He hasn't had the the ability to translate that to yeah. the ice at the NHL level. And who knows, we might see them trade. Heat at some yeah. point this season, maybe closer towards the deadline uh, for some depth forward. But yeah. I don't think they'd do it right away because I think they'd want to hold on to them just in case there's some injuries or some something happened during the year and they're going to need that extra defenseman. Yeah, and so uh, as we had said, we've got uh, 15 forwards as well, so that's three more than we need. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, you can go over some of the guys that were kind of extra. I think we, we kind of know who the, the guys are going to be on the mainstay yeah. for the roster, but there's a few names that may or may not be able to make it. Well, one of them is uh, Chemleski. Okay. Uh, Sumela, who we think is going to make as a third line center. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> there's a whole lot there's going on behind, so it's kind of hard to concentrate. Little but there you go. Um, <laughs> I gotta even look at the roster. Again, uh, Rourke Chartier was another, Chartier another was big one. one. Yeah, yeah. Rourke Chartier. Uh, he's been in preseason games. We've seen him playing really well. Uh, I thought maybe he was trying to control the puck just a little bit too much, trying to do a little bit uh, all by himself. But you know, they like what they're seeing out of the guy. And when we take a look at the depth that we have, Dylan Gambrell being the other guy yeah. that is potentially vying for that fourth position or that fourth center position yeah. rather, um, it, it seems to be kind of between the two of them, really. What I, from what I can see. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see them in. <laughs> change them and send them up and down in between uh, Barracuda yeah. to get some experience and more ice time. Um, you can see him getting playing, basically playing the hot hand, who's doing better, who's looking better, and then uh, switching them out. Yeah, I can see that too. But I think I think we're spot on with Sumela. It sounds like he's going to be the number three center. Um, the chemistry between him and uh, Jonas Donskoy yeah. has been really, really apparent in the preseason game and in the yeah. practices that we've seen so far. So we're expecting that that's going to be the case. Uh, again, that fourth line center seems to be the one that's really up uh, for for debate, if right. you will, on the team. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, opening night who they uh, who they dress, who they don't, and kind of throughout the season who they interchange them with. Yeah. Yeah. So that's about it for the roster cuts. Uh, I'm sure they'll make some more this week, and uh, we can touch on it next we'll next week. For that, yeah. yeah. The most points on the team for the San Jose Sharks will be scored by Logan Couture, Brent Burns, King. Joe Thornton. I'm going to say Eric Carlson. He's going to do it from the blue line. Eric Carlson. Logan Couture. Uh, Logan Couture. Uh, Logan Couture. Most points this season. I'm going Cooch. Logan Couture. All the way. Okay, so we wanted to talk about the new stealth black third jerseys that the Sharks came out with recently. And... I couldn't help myself, I bought one, <laughs> so yeah, um, you can tell there's a lot of the white space that got taken out and it's made uh, black and dark, like in the triangle, right down here and up there, right? They've made the, the stick a nice kind of like a darker teal kind of a look, which is really kind of cool. And then up on the shoulders, there goes the uh, the fins that Aaron likes so much, right? Love them, love them. <laughs> I wish so, this was the main patch. Obviously, they've taken a lot of the color out of that, yeah. they've made it very dark in that stealth look. Um, this yeah, is this shiny too, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Really cool, yeah. And, and apparently the player names are all very dark as well. Uh, the other thing is on the arm patch, I don't know if you're going to be able to even pick this up. We'll take some pictures later and show it. But it's kind of like a circuitry, uh, kind of a little shimmer to it. Yeah. And there's an S and J in there that's embedded in. So you, it's just a small detail. You'll never see that on TV. It's not going to pick up during a game, but when you wear it as a fan, you'll see it. You'll see it on your elbows and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but it's a pretty sharp looking jersey. Very cool looking jersey, yeah. So like I said, I couldn't help myself. Um, went over to the uh, the concourse and picked one up right away as soon as we came in here. Again, Sharks Fan Fest yeah. uh, 2018. So I just I think the jerseys look great. Um, I think they're going to really pop on the ice, especially with yeah. the new lighting that they have, the LED. Uh, the black is really going to black it out. And the teal, I think the teal sticks out a lot more because the black is so dark and, and overwhelming yeah. that the teal really kind of pops a little bit more. And the only, like, I'll come back and look at this. The only other color is the eye. It's the only orange in the entire thing. So, and I like what they did. They kept the teeth white. Um, I just 
kind of like the last thing you see before you get chopped, right? Yeah. So they, they left that white. In fact, they were talking with the guy who had made it, Terry uh, uh, Smith. Smith, Terry Smith, yes. Um, and he talked a little bit about the jersey and what uh, what it, uh, the original logo, what it represented. The triangle being, you know, San Jose, San Francisco, and Oakland. And uh, so they've kept it within the confines of the triangle. The old black jersey that they had, it was the uh, shark that wasn't in the triangle anymore. It was just yeah. kind of there with the, the fin hanging out or the, the tail hanging out, which is really cool too. I love that one. I actually own one of those as well. Yeah. But um, with this, I like that they took the uh, the more traditional style of the logo, albeit the newer version of that same logo, and then just did little tweaks to it. So we go back to an episode where we talked about John Becker, and he was saying, you know, we're planning on doing something a little bit different than what everyone else is doing, and I had kind of thought that maybe that meant we're not going to be doing a throwback, right? Or it was going to be orange. Or that it was going to be <laughs> orange, right? Well, it, he did something completely different with it, you know. He went with um, taking our, the logo that is you know, the Sharks logo and kind of putting like an overlay on it, making it dark and, and this, this stealth aspect to it, which I thought was just a really good job. And we don't have the shorts with it, but the whole package, and we'll look at the picture uh, with the shorts and everything. Yeah. And the socks, like the teal really pops. It's really a dark look to it. It's, it's, the yeah. Sharks never really done anything like this before. Um, I think it's going to be great. And I also think because the Sharks are going to be so good this year, if we start winning with that jersey and that look, it's going to be around for a long time. Yeah, and many fans have talked about the curse of the black jersey. Yeah. Uh, I guess we, we lost more games wearing black than usual. I don't think that's going to happen this season. So, I don't know, if I were you, uh, I'd maybe consider getting out there and getting one of these bad boys because it looks really good. Yeah. I can't wait to it's get sharp to, looking. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait to get going with the opening season, wear this thing to the games, and it's going to be great. Yep. Yep. I've been a Sharks fan since October of 1991. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Too long to count. Since 1991. <laughs> I've been a Sharks fan since they began in 1991 at the Cow Palace. I've been a Sharks fan for the last 25 plus, but season ticket holder for 11 now. So this is the year. I say it every year, but this is the year. Uh, I've been a Sharks fan for, um, off and on ever since they started playing. Like I remember them playing at the uh, uh, up at the Cow Palace and then seeing the, the Shark Tank get built. And I've liked hockey forever, so since they're the local team, they've been my favorites. 1991. About 10 years. We're 180 years. That's a long time. Six years. Uh, four years. Uh, I'm a newbie. Newbie? Newbie. Welcome. Thank you. Well, I guess that's the end of the episode number 15 here at SAP Center for Sharks Fan Fest. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Really do appreciate all the people that stop by, give us comments. Yeah. A lot of the podcasters that listen to us, and we don't really know who a lot of them are, so it was great to see you guys coming in. Yeah, thanks uh, Thanks for listening to us on podcasts. Even if you can't listen to us or watch us on YouTube, we appreciate it. Uh, give us a five-star review. That would be great. Let all your friends know and spread the word. Uh, the Fin Factor is getting bigger and bigger. We're, it's kind of crazy. We're growing, and it's uh, a lot thanks to you guys. We really do appreciate all the love and support that we're getting from you. You know, we've also got... Well, there's one other thing we wanted to tell these folks about, and we're going to put the, uh, the link on the bottom of the screen right now. Uh, we're going to run another promotion, and this time it's going to be for a Fin Factor hat. Yes. You know what? What better way to end it than right there? Go Sharks! Go Sharks! <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Next week. Bye bye. Bye. My favorite web series? Well, I've got a sign right here. The Fin Factor. The Fin Factor, of course. The Fin Factor. Uh, tough one. Gotta be the Fin Factor. Well, of course, the Fin Factor. The Fin Factor? The Fin Factor. Fin Factor. Yeah. Gotta be the Fin Factor all day. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five-star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode. And if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.